So we're here. <laughs> we're here on the Triangle Introverts tour. This is the second show of our tour. We are currently in Salt Lake City, Utah, and we took a pit stop to do a quick little little discussion. <laughs> no, we're golden. I, I'm like Bailey in the frame, we're so like they can't see this. We're it's having gross. a little discussion here with our buddy uh, Isaac here at the Utah Art Alliance because they have a sick ass studio. Uh, we'll probably include some of it in the f full documentary <laughs> of this tour. So, um, are you the host? I'll host it because I have amp up the energy. Uh, this is boring so far. For Let's sure, get for sure. Loosen so, up. Take Isaac, your shirt off. Go crazy. If I know one thing about Isaac is gone wild. high energy, high octane, twenty twenty four seven. Your voice sounds really good. Yeah, really? yeah. I'm really jealous. ASMR. Thank you. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> <laughs> So where where do we start? What's a what's a good starting topic? Let's talk about the Salt Lake City music scene and how you play a part into it. I don't play a part into it. That's the, that's, that's, that's how you play a part that, into that's, it. That's, that's, that's mm. a, it, It's cool, I where, guess. Where do you see the the scene progressing in the next? Let's you know give like a long term twelve months and even longer than that maybe you know 24 to you know like where do you see the progression of uh that's one year and two years yeah yeah, yeah i did it months uh i feel like it'll be the exact same in two years the thing with salt lake is that it's uh, everybody's so split apart um clicks form and the clicks are always like fuck you to the other click mm. people don't want to work together i mean some people are there's a lot of cool things that happen here there's uh existing most they're really cool they bring people together that's beautiful but there's a lot of other people that don't it's really just fuck you if you're not part of them and i'm not down with that a lot of people aren't down with that i'm just here doing my own thing do you think it's like uh like the background of the state that kind of makes it like that? absolutely it's because you're either mormon or you're not mormon and if you're not mormon <laughs> Uh, people, whoever, their friend group, they get into, uh, they usually stick with that friend group. People don't really branch out that much. And Are there a lot yeah. of Mormon artists? <laughs> I don't keep up with Mormon artists. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Interesting. So. Interesting. Um, I had a question. I just slipped my mind. That's all right. Yeah. I will ask a question. Um, do you think the status of the Salt Lake music has kind of progressed or do you think it's just been stagnant? I mean, if you're in Salt Lake, it looks like it's progressed. But if you're anywhere else in the United States, hmm. nobody's really checking. See, um, I mean, we've had this discussion like multiple times, but to just get it on record, the thing about that's really weird coming into the Salt Lake scene is... Coming from Denver, it's basically ran by the venues, which is difficult for mm. up-and-coming artists because the venues are very expensive to rent out, and you can really only get on a show if you're, like, the 24th artist performing mm. that night. Yeah, but you can do DIY anywhere. Like, you can go to a record store in Denver and be like, hey, can I do a show here? How much to rent out for a night? Like, how much to have a private party here for a night? Like, you mm -hmm. can do... You can do that anywhere. And that's that's one thing we're kind of like exploring too on this tour because our last show was literally at an arcade. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's one thing I haven't opened my eyes up to is that we can kind of uh, lower our, I guess, our production value just so we can still get performances happening. Yeah. That makes yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, you can do that anyway. But uh, the, the problem with that, though, is that you have to worry about getting shut down or uh, permits yeah, we've had some experience from <laughs> when we first met we yeah had, yeah but also i mean a lot of those shows too is like an excuse for underage kids to come drink mm. uh at least what i've seen in salt lake but you know that's yeah. that's bound to happen so i think in in our scene it, it tends to get clicky as well um you know obviously it, to different degrees um from from state to state but 
I personally haven't heard of any other state having a scene that's like fully together and operating and building each other up. Is that just an unrealistic expectation? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I don't think that'll ever happen in mm. any city. Okay. I mean, look at LA. Like LA is hella scattered. Like LA is where everything's popping, really, but mm-hmm. nobody's working together. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people are working together, but. But well, yeah, as soon as you get something popping in your own state, you ship out to I LA. I just think and do your I own think thing the best there. way is just to find your group, find the people that you're on the same wavelength with, that you can creatively be on the same page with, and they respect you, you respect them, you can work together, make something you like, and that's all that matters. And then just go from there. I mean, the social media. Like, <laughs> you want to hit my jewel? Or hit my jewel? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was saying <laughs> this. Jewel. Oh, my bad. (laughs) Um, That's probably one of the most important parts that a lot of new up-and-coming artists in our city don't understand. It's not the popping off here in your city and then moving out. It's kind of building a base here and then building up from the bottom. Because obviously, like, we've known people who have, you know, been in our state and done something made a little bit of noise and then just kind of like head out and i haven't heard anything since and they might be busy and shit doing doing whatever music out there but i think the most important thing is having longevity in this industry you know that's my biggest goal is having like a long lasting music career yeah um i don't want to you know have like a little phase of uh you know success in, in a way and i think it's it's really easy to kill your your groove when you find some sort of uh, momentum especially within you know a, a specific city and community and then as soon as you have that you boom you're out i think that's what really keeps everything from evolving um to you know where then it's just like the locals just being locals you know there isn't any of that presence of like oh wow like you know i really know that guy you know i I haven't met him in person but i've seen his shit everywhere yeah 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 Uh, i mean you can still do shit in a city like you can make shit pop in Mm -hmm. a city Mm -hmm. but if that's your only focus then you're not gonna get to longevity Mm -hmm. longevity like yeah well said let's talk about popping real quick your tweet is really funny (laughs) Oh yeah. Can we get someone to pull that up real quick? I'll uh. Can you pull that I'll up. Pull it up. I it's, I don't have my phone it's, on uh, me. It's over there. Um. Yeah, just right here on the video. Isaac has a certain draw. He has a certain draw to the community here in Salt Lake, and it's very intriguing because it's something that I tried to work towards, and I achieved a slight amount of of it. <laughs> Uh, just like being able to draw attention to his mind and his and the funny things he says is an art form because mm. he does it almost perfectly with every tweet he has. <laughs> Not lately, really though. <laughs> so I mean, like I personally, I don't put too much energy in towards um, getting a lot of people to pay attention towards uh, certain things. You know, like. I think there's a lot of people that go day to day and like, oh, this is going to be good content. And, you know, it just builds your page. Um, And I think you just have like a natural idea of, you know, this is overused. This is what's going to be funny for sure. Um, And, you know, like the the line between, okay, now that I have all these things building my profile, the next step is my true passion, you know, and how this is going to add towards building my brand building yeah yeah it. but the funny shit i don't even really like focus that much mm-hmm. i don't focus that on it at all mm-hmm. it's just it's like ah, it's funny yeah no it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> post super cool. it up, post it up and if uh, people laugh or retweet mm-hmm. like it uh, people tend cool. to listen when they see your soul that's, that's, that's yeah just, yeah that's stuck yeah yeah, yeah, a long yeah. Time. Mm-hmm. yeah but i don't even do social media like that i don't like social media mm. at all I feel like I do it because I have to. I feel like everybody does it because they have yeah. to. Well, everybody wants to feel like they fit in somewhere. Mm-hmm. Or everybody want to look like they want to look like a movie star or a SoundCloud rapper or a fucking glamour model or mm-hmm. anything. Mm-hmm. They just want to feel famous mm-hmm. for a second. Mm-hmm. Is it, it? It's like an addiction to a lot of people. 
they they get addicted to taking pictures or dressing up yeah, and, and and uh, I'm not saying don't follow your dreams. If you know you have it, and fucking shoot for it. But a lot of people do it because they just want that attention. That they're missing something in their lives. That yeah. they don't get that attention from somebody. They're missing. They're missing something because like not everybody can be famous. Then nobody's famous. Mm-hmm. Not everybody can mm-hmm. blow up. Sure. Then nobody will yeah. blow up. That's that's not how it works. Is it frustrating <coughs> to see your silly tweets get a lot more attention than like something that you're serious about? Absolutely, but that's just the world we live in. Yeah. Um. I think back to what you were saying. Um. You know, everybody wants that that stardom. They want to hit that that goal of you know like performing in front of fucking fifty thousand people and you know the crowd singing every lyric you know we all want that to some degree or or another in in the thing that you're you're working towards i think it it comes down to like just loving the process of like every step in between that to get to that you know yeah yeah yeah, you know you uh you can you have to carry that that image in in your mind throughout everything but highs and lows big actions or small you know everything has to carry the same weight um as that that end goal will um you know or else you're not going to make it or else it's just not gonna, you know. Even if you do make it by by chance or by luck, it won't bring the same level of you know fulfillment that you know going out and feeding someone who's homeless could. You know, like yeah, so. yeah. There are very few artists in my city that I feel like are actually in love with the creative process and do this for themselves mm. and not for anybody else. Do you think it's the artists that you work with here? Yeah, I mean, th- everybody has room for improvement. Uh, everybody here at the studio, though, they're, they're, they all love the creative process. They all do the geeky shit. Like, one time I came in, and people were fucking hitting pots and pans in the microphone, <laughs> trying to make their own drum packs, and I thought that was really cool. Uh, one artist I really love is uh, my, is my friend Jacob, Afro Foo, Afro underscore Foo. He's been taking pictures for years just because he loves it, and he, gets, he does get a lot of attention, but, like, you can just tell he actually cares and fucks with what he's doing. Mm-hmm. He loves what he does. He's not doing this for attention. He loves taking pictures. He loves setting a mood. He loves setting a vibe. And, and that's, that's what inspires me is when people actually love what they're doing. And you can tell that they love what they're doing. That's one of the things that uh, I really enjoy about his artistry, too. That I know a lot of his, I wouldn't say, like, fans, but, like, his followers um they we all kind of like draw that similar connection because i i see the same thing that everyone else in the city sees like this man's crazy with the photos and you could tell like he just really loves it yeah yeah it, it's beautiful yeah yeah it's really beautiful. he's amazing yeah and you talk to him and he's just such a humble guy he's really quiet he's a little reserved but then when you get to know him and you crack that shell, he's like super funny and likes to fuck around. He's just he's just he's like a kid. He's got a child heart. I love it. I love that guy. I think you you do a really good job of having a community around you. You know, like a group of people that you know what you see within them, but also staying within your own lane. Um, you do you prefer to work around people driven in the in the same you know style or is it you know you could do this completely it's it's not even about the same style it's about if we can connect on the same wavelength like if we can have a fucking conversation about something that's real if we can talk about life rather than just talking about flexing shit wearing some shit to flex Mm -hmm. like that shit gets exhausting like yeah you're flexing this hoodie now but in two years nobody's gonna care about that hoodie Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Relationships are probably the most important thing when it comes to business and especially music business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I can't, I can't connect with everybody. I don't hang out with a lot of people. I don't bring a lot of people to work on shit with me because people just want to flex or they just want to <laughs> talk about fucking doing hype <coughs> shit or doing local shit. I, it's just, it's, it's exhausting. It's mm-hmm. like. I get it, but at the same time, is I'm not thinking local ever. I'm thinking bigger than that. I want to go to 
fucking Japan and li- live there for a year. I-, I I cannot die until I've been to space at least once. <laughs> like people shit on Elon Musk, but that dude is actually building rockets to fucking expand and mm-hmm. travel the space frontier. Like that's fucking lit. Mm-hmm. That's fucking sick. I want to do that shit. I support that shit. Mm-hmm. Like that's what I think is cool. So what's your next step um past music um you know uh, uh, you know s- seeing yourself in, in the space where you have enough financial freedom to start investing time and money into other things like where do you see yourself uh putting that energy in? doing whatever i feel like doing at the time mm. Okay, I, I, like, I I have I have ultimate plans, but at the same time, if I'm not loving it, I'm not gonna do it. I need to love what I do. I need to want to do what I love. There's no point. In, we only have one life. Why would I want to try and just flex or try and just make a fucking shitty SoundCloud song, try and get attention from mm-hmm. it? Like I I want to make something that's me, regardless if people like it or not. I don't care. Do you have like an end goal that you look towards every time that you wake up? Going to space. (laughs) (laughs) Having a Tesla. Tesla. (laughs) Which Tesla? I don't know. The Tesla 3 is cool. Tesla model. Wait, wait, what's that new one? Tesla X? Is the Model X? The Model X? uh, I don't know. I want a Tesla. I fun with Tesla. They're cool. The the fucking Lunar Tesla. uh, Neon guts playing in the back of this. uh, Oh, absolutely. You gotta have that. (laughs) Yeah, early 20 Rager all day. (laughs) (laughs) Who's your favorite artist? Mm. Uh, A lot. My favorite artist is Frank Ocean. He's a god. Yeah. He's a god. Uh, a lot of people's favorite artists I've known as like Uzi, Cardi, all them. I love them so much, but also I like looking into who inspired them, mm. like or who inspired the people that inspired them. I don't know. It's, I don't. I don't have one favorite artist anymore. It's just I love to look at everything. Give me like, give me a top five. Ooh. Is that uh, too much? Give, me, give me a top 50. You need to calm down real quick. <laughs> this man doesn't I, care about anything. I've been listening to a lot of Drexia. Hell yeah. The other people put, a, put me on today. Um, I love Apex Twin. Mm. I love Apex Twin on psychedelics. What's <laughs> mm. uh, your favorite kind of psychedelic? Uh, probably mushrooms. Mm. But, uh, but also 2CE is a drug I experimented with for a couple weeks. You were telling me about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing, man. It's amazing. I'm Isaac 2.0 <laughs> after that. I, I'm a different person. I literally am a different person. You microdose or taking? Uh, I took a couple full doses and then microdosed the rest. What's it like? Uh, <laughs> Jewel break. <clears throat> it's like uh, everything becomes math. Like I was looking at the wall and the paint was like dripping and I could touch it. It, it wouldn't stick to my fingers, but the paint like on the wall was coming out, and it looked like there was a fucking subwoofer on the other side of the wall pumping what this wet paint while it's dripping, so it's like <laughs> coming in and out. And I was looking at these flowers on my dresser, and they were dead. But uh, when I was looking at them, when I was laying in bed, um, they were dying and coming back to life and blooming and then dying again and repeating that that pattern all within five seconds and it just kept happening like and i would look uh, at my That's bed crazy. i was looking at my bed and uh I, they were they're gray sheets so you can't see the mattress at all and you can't even see like the design of the mattress through the sheets or whatever but uh looking at the sheets i could literally see the lines in the mattress under the sheets and they were glowing and it was fucking yeah. crazy like the little stitching yeah you yeah the little it. stitching but you can't s- you can't see it it's like every pe- I, it was like almost like a little x-ray vision Wait, it, your it, mind interprets so crazy. many things but it's your consciousness that says like nah that's not possible you know like yeah that's why well when you trip really heavy on shrooms and you see um I forget what they're called like all the the circles that are like intertwined and things like those are true patterns that your your mind is able to pick up but th- like through psychedelics you're at the point of consciousness where like you can filter that information and now like fully see it um, yeah yeah 
some crazy shit. Crazy I love psychedelics. Sure. Yeah. Great therapy. Doing two CE is also like intensive mental therapy. I felt mm. like it made me realize why a lot of my anxiety and depression is just straight up stupid. <laughs> I'm not saying depression, anxiety is stupid. Don't cancel me. Have you, have you <laughs> like feeling like you've been uh, a lot more healthy mentally since taking like TCE and like shrooms? Yes, and stuff? yes, yes. I I I I've been in dark places before uh, this year a lot. I don't know why. Uh, I feel like when the body is not necessarily fully healthy, it really affects the conscious, and uh, it makes you think different things. Like mm. these thoughts come into your head that you don't want to think, and it gives you this anxiety and all that shit. And uh, whoever or whatever your thoughts are in that moment, you are your thoughts, and it, it really takes of an effect on you. And it just really takes a lot of practice and meditation almost to <coughs> keep those thoughts away and recognize that these are just thoughts when they come this is why it's like really good to be eating all the time well not all the time <laughs> this is why it's good to eat like good healthy meals get enough sleep pretty sure everyone yes. at this table doesn't oh. eat meat everyone here doesn't eat meat no i still eat meat oh, every okay. now and then but for the most part um, i've been vegetarian mm -hmm. <laughs> it's 2019, man. Like you I'm guys, working on it. You're I'm gonna get canceled if you keep eating meat. Hey, I'm working on it. But you you kind of progress. Milk. Do you still eat dairy? Not really. I, we only drink soy milk and yeah, I saw yeah, and almond milk. I saw mm -hmm. the almond milk. Mm -hmm. All that shit. I have a confession. So much better for you. You know, yeah. food can be such a crazy hindrance in people's lives, but it's also the best medicine. You yeah, know, like you don't need most of the the prescription in western medicine if you're intaking all the vitamins and minerals that's like given to us you know yeah within this yeah, yeah 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 and also factory farming is just fucking terrible for the environment <laughs> yeah uh not just meat though even like plant farming like mm. there's still there's still a toll out yeah. of that yeah of course they're, they're like they're displacing wildlife to mm. make all these crops for vegetables mm. and all that stuff a lot of those crops go yeah. straight into meat production though. exactly yeah, it yeah, goes yeah. right yeah. into feeding those so the, cattle and and uh, poultry and uh, there's a lot there's a lot we need to do mm -hmm. would be your yep. if you were if you're the the chief president <laughs> executive ceo of usda foods what would be your next step i wouldn't be the chief i am not the one just ending I'd, it. I, I also don't think that it should be up to one person for these major decisions like the president of the united states i don't think one person should be yeah, yeah. the leader of all this shit there's n it's inhuman there's like a i think it's in switzerland the the prime minister she i don't know if it's actually that country but she comes from like a science background so everything she does she starts with a hypothesis and then goes through the, the process of you know testing her theory retesting seeing what variables could be changed and then going you know into that with into politics and like that just makes so much sense rather than you know like all these people sitting in a boardroom just like talking about these bills that have been promoted or you know like uh, given to them and yeah. there's there's no testing whether or not this is gonna you know see an effect on us or not it's yeah. just just thrown out there these are just ideas that we vote on you know right away yeah um, yeah so yeah this is, politics are fucked fuck politics it's <laughs> fucking nuts out there <laughs> yeah yeah it's a, it's a race to get popping before the world explodes <coughs> nuclear <coughs> war yeah i'm just it's trying all for to, clicks yeah, trying to get my cloud everyone up. wants clicks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trump's whole campaign is just for clicks <laughs> everything he tweets is just for clicks everything biden is trying to do now is copy what trump is doing mm -hmm. it's just for clicks mm. true what do you want to talk about? What's on your mind? What do you want to share with mm. us? I got to pee. You got to pee? Ooh. Yeah. Dude, go pee. Cool. Uh, I like we'll, Henry's. Yeah, we'll take a time to <laughs> go right into a Henry's break. Yeah. Um, right. We'd like to take thank pee. this uh, sponsor, Henry's. Yeah, go ahead. Go pee right now. Pee. Uh, oh. Henry's. No, let's go. Was, uh, <laughs> it yep. It's Modelo time. You, you can go pee. And just fuck around. We're going to have to come back to utah again and again just for this podcast 
We definitely should. Mm. We need Gage here. He'd do this so much more professionally. Mm. Oh, so. Mm. Okay. This is what he does. <laughs> this is the type of yeah. shit Gage does. I saw a podcast in, in his eyes when I met him today. He's, yeah, I just he, knew he loves to run podcasts. <laughs> he loves to do all that shit. He makes it look so good. What's your favorite color? Magenta. Straight out of left field, magenta. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good color. What are you gonna name your firstborn child? Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Thanos. I don't I, like to plan shit like that. I like just in the moment, whatever. He just pops right. out, and you just think of it. Good <laughs> yeah. That's, That's how I named my dog, dog, dude. I got my dog, and I was just like, "You look like a nookie." I'm, oh. Your name is Nookie, bro. Oh. How old is Nikki? Three this month. I've had her for three years. Going strong. You get her as a <laughs> You get her as just a little seedling. Like it was just a little pup. Yeah, yeah. I got her uh, she was like a couple weeks old. Was she a rescue? Yes. Yes. Oh she was? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Don't don't hate yourself yet. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we like rescues. So we like I. adopting rescues. Mm-hmm. Dude, they're so much happier. Mm-hmm. They can be, tra- they can be, be pretty saved. traumatized, but that's true. But I mean, our our friend Justin has two rescues, yeah. Gor- gorgeous dogs, and they're, they're just so connected to their owners now because yeah. you know they uh, they take great care of them. So you know they just build great connections with. Yeah, that's not- how me and Nookie are. She's like mm-hmm. my twin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Me and her like we always just vibe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She fucking like posts up, smokes a blunt with you too. She like puts in between her she, paws. She's no, no, no. I don't let her get high. Psychedelics. I, I, I put her out the room when I smoke. Good for oh, you. Okay. I appreciate that. Psychedelics and animals are a pretty good combo as well. Put a tab on. I don't tongue. give psychedelics to my animal. Oh. Just like open up her eyes. And put, a, <laughs> put a drop of acid in. No. There. <laughs> that is terrible. Give it to her as eye you drops. Are canceled. <laughs> you are fucking canceled. Whoa. Uh, we've been in Salt Lake City for about five hours, and we're already canceled. So sensational. How does it feel to be fucking canceled? Honestly, it feels by you, great. it feels pretty good. <laughs> well, I canceled myself. That's when, different. When Isaac cancels us, the whole state cancels us. <laughs> that's, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> if if Isaac went into the comment section of that one tweet we talked about earlier and just said, "I mean, you're not on Twitter, so I mean, you're already canceled." But like, if you put Javier Hustles is canceled. Everyone would be like, or even yeah. if you were just like, Javier Hustles made this Facebook post, I would just get shit. Is that how you say it? Javier Hustles? That's yeah. sick. I always, I always read it as Z- Xavier Hustles. Z- <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but Javier Hustles. That's hard. The X stands oh. like pronounced with Hustles. That's hard. Mm-hmm. I'll vote with that. Mm-hmm. It, it used to be Javier Rassles because I, I used to wrestle. Javi beats. Haji be. beats. That's classic. His Snapchat is hue 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 hue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's really funny is that uh, my current girlfriend, she. Current? Messed- you planning on the next one? My current girlfriend. He's, <laughs> he's disregarding the the ex ones before too. My, oh so, shit. Yeah. The girlfriend. My current was, girlfriend. What does that even mean? <laughs> my girlfriend in the now. Are you planning on breaking up with her? No. no. So my she, current girlfriend. Hey man, a GF is a wife. <laughs> if you're not wife. dating to like possibly marry her, why are you dating her? <laughs> my wife. There's some truth to that. Yeah, but there's uh, absolutely yeah, truth yeah, to yeah, that. Yeah, like, why, 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 why are you wasting her time if you're not planning on possibly marrying? Isaac gets a girlfriend. The same goes. The just... same goes the <laughs> other way. I love my girlfriend, bro. Hmm. I know. I could tell. So let me get back to my. So, so <laughs> my my current girlfriend, um, she messages me on on Twitter a few times, and I uh, I wasn't really like focused at the times because I was kind of popping on Twitter just a little bit. So she messages me, and I like blew her off a few times just because I'm a fucking douchebag. And then she like messages me like one last time. She's like, "Hey, what's your Snapchat?" And it's like this cute ass girl. Like she's like this blonde, like Ukrainian, like model looking girl. And like I just had to hit her with the my Snapchat is Hugh 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 Hugh. <laughs> and she added me. And that was wifey. Yeah, now we've been dating and 
it's kind of really funny that she put in the words hue, 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 hue. That is really funny. So <laughs> <laughs> married to the game. That's about it. You can't I'm change it. I'm too, I'm too deep. What about you, Dylan? How's your love life? It's What's going on in your head? I, I want to know what makes you tick. <laughs> blood. Uh, blood <laughs> and air. Um, recently single. I uh, just got out of a three-year three three year total time relationship and you know what you, what you said you know if you're not dating to like get married that was like very prevalent towards the end of our relationship um you know she noticed it a lot more than I did um but you know and looking back on it in retrospect like you know that that's how it was you know we were just kind of uh comfortable with each other and you know there at the time and um you know it, it's been a ultimately good thing to part ways you know it's given me the time to experience you know, express myself and especially focus in on, on music. Cause yeah. there was a time where it was so hard to juggle both. Um, you know, she's a incredibly passionate girl about her things, but she didn't find the same passion about music the way that I felt it, especially our community. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, now that I don't have to juggle any other opinions, it's just, uh, you know, come time for me to be like, you know, this is, the fucking shit that I'm gonna live for right now, and so that's that's where it's at. Um, and you know, like it's it's funny because it brings up a lot of lust as well. You know, like you, you chase lust. You know, like I have like yeah. those those quick thoughts of like, oh god, that girl is so pretty. Like you know, we'll date and we'll be perfect together. And then you know, you just like recenter yourself, and you're just like, you know, I don't need any of that right now. What I need is for me to be okay. I need for me to, uh, you know, feel totally comfortable within myself that I can like progress yeah i mean you need to recognize what's real and what's lust mm -hmm. like is it realistic like do you guys actually vibe on this level or do you just want to fuck mm -hmm. yeah true, true. <laughs> and, and if you're getting into a relationship it's important to uh, always have those discussions whether you're polyamorous whether you're fucking monogamous mm -hmm. like, whatever it is like you need to have those discussions and uh, i feel like a lot of people just jump in without mm -hmm. those discussions and think they're in love mm -hmm and end up in a very toxic relationship mm -hmm. and that's that's not that's no bueno yeah yeah that's pretty much what happened right there so you know, but it's just gives i oh, say this i think i said it multiple times today you know you only gain insight through experience and so i yeah, would true. not be able to you know just have these kinds of thoughts and know what i want in the future without having you know that relationship with her and, yeah you know, I, I feel that that's yeah. how that's how my last relationship before uh mm -hmm. before my uh girlfriend now mm -hmm. um, I would just go like a week without seeing her yeah yeah because <laughs> I'm working on music or doing the legal things <laughs> um, what illegal things I cannot talk about those <laughs> Tell us. no mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah I just got to a point where it's just like hey this is I'm not happy mm -hmm. <laughs> this mm -hmm. isn't working I want you to be happy you deserve to be happy and ended it. Yeah, it's powerful. but she didn't really take it that way though. She like was really upset about that, mm -hmm. even though I thought it was completely completely honest. Mm -hmm. but, she I mean, probably I guess saw that's... like like a whole different perspective. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe I don't know. Maybe I was a little shitty to her. I, I hey man, we're, we're young. We're yeah, I, I think it, it's yeah. pretty. It's generally easy. Like obviously, it depends what happens in the relationship. But you don't have to end a relationship. You know, feeling totally like hateful against that person or you know just having all this remorse about everything that happened you know I had broken up uh, with this girl previously and that's you know how it felt and we ended up getting back together for another year and a half um, and after we broke up this time you know I just there there was none of that filled up with you know within me I was just like okay like oh, this is how I'm gonna take it you yeah. know and like it's just every heartache or problem is just an opportunity in disguise and yeah. you run with it and uh you know take it with what you will yeah yeah i guess that's just part of growing up mm -hmm. getting older uh, adulting adulting is fucking powerful i paid four hundred dollars to get my brakes fixed powerful i'm still trying to fix my own Finan car because i don't <laughs> want to pay a fucking mechanic yeah <laughs> financing your car mm. powerful uh, yeah how's that going how much do you pay a month 
So it's like, honestly, <laughs> it's honestly not that bad because the only thing that really makes me upset about it is that it's a four year lease and just like being committed to something that I have no control of for four years is just uh, stupid. But it's like $158 a month. So it's honestly chill as fuck. And it's a, it's it's a, it's a nice working car. Like mm-hmm. I, we would have taken it out here had it not have like so many miles on there, but like. Maybe one day, maybe towards the end of my mm-hmm. lease, <laughs> we'll just run it up out here. And we'll yeah, just yeah, leases <laughs> are scary. So yeah, because I mean, if I, I fuck you. that car up, like I, I still have to pay for it. Yeah, sketch. But you know, you take care of your shit, then it it's totally doable. You know, I think like we're we're all at the age where we're all working full time, and just are you working full time, Isaac? Uh, I'm working. 32 hours okay. so yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, time. yeah you're, you're around <laughs> you're around there but you know you uh that uh, it's like guns and butter you know where uh, if you ever heard that where it's guns never heard that. guns are the things that appreciate over time in value like art and um like property things that like you put money into and it's going to give back to you eventually yeah. and the butter guess. is just mm, butter melt chains you know shoes stupid shit that's like just adding to an appearance then and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah see a lot of people i work with that are just so engulfed in butter you know like this yeah one that's kid, a lot of people yeah he's just flexing to me like this tiny little gold chain that he ordered and it, you know it's like a couple that's like hundred. all teenagers that that's who is it? like Air everybody amount. between the ages <laughs> of 18 and 23 i feel like are all butter uh-huh. yeah. it's all trying to flex for the mm-hmm. gram yeah. Mm-hmm. It's all hey, let, let's take to like some model like pictures. Let me put on this fit I, that I saw Cardi wear something just like. Put it on Instagram. It's it's crazy that like I mean within us it makes sense you know where we want to you know put our money because like obviously you know we're surrounded by all this ex- expensive equipment that like is a necessity to you know push your passion further. But, you know, there's such a large population that it doesn't even come across, you know, as yeah. like something that's, that you could do. You know, yeah. people change their whole lifestyles around like rock climbing, for instance, because it's so fucking expensive. But, you know, if you're going to put your money into that, you're going full fledged into outdoor sports. You know, that's yeah. everything. Um, but, you know, it, or you could just. I think people should just do what they love and stop doing it for social media. Mm. It's, it's uh, I don't get it. You you have a really strong point on that, and I think that's powerful because I think a lot of people get wrapped up in in that bullshit. They really do. I used to be wrapped up in that bullshit. A lot of people I know do that. You can get wrapped up in that bullshit one day, and then the next day be completely I, out I've of it. I've been too, wrapped yeah. up in that yeah. bullshit too. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but uh, I just. I don't get it mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. like that i don't know how to say it that, i i, that I mean i i get it like a lot of people live in the fantasy world which is online like if you're online Fucking for simulation uh, yeah <laughs> if you're online for a lot of the time in a day if you're always checking twitter if you're always checking social media uh, you eventually become in that fantasy world where you think every opinion that like it's a lot of retweets or whatever is real like uh, uh on sunday i saw um I was on Reddit and Twitter, just looking around. Every I, I'll just open it in the morning or whatever, check it out. And I saw that this girl died. Uh, they, it said like "e boy killed e girl" or whatever. And uh, unfortunately, I saw very graphic images of this girl being killed. And I don't know. I looked more into it because I was interested. And it was this uh, this girl's boyfriend killed her or whatever. Uh, and posted a picture Four, uh, of her. Christ. He posted a picture of her like with a slit throat and shit like in Discord and all that. And then it, it like went viral. But then the next day, like I saw a lot of like the Twitter activists running with a different narrative. Like uh, like not necess- I don't necessarily disagree with their narrative. It's just people don't look into things to form their own opinion. They only form their own opinion based off of what recently got the most retweets yeah so uh it was her boyfriend or maybe they weren't dating but they were close they knew each other for sure and they uh, but like what it said was this tweet i saw is like men should stop killing women for refusing their advances and i'm just like 
No fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> people shouldn't kill people in the first place. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but I know that was just a tweet based off of the last thing that got a lot of retweets. Mm-hmm. They didn't actually look into it. Mm-hmm. It's like people live in this fantasy world. And where you get your news and, and is crazy. Yeah, yeah. And if, if, you get, if you're only getting your news off social media, you are not getting news. You are getting misconstrued opinions. Mm-hmm. You are getting these narratives that aren't actually tr- necessarily true. Mm-hmm. Like, I... I I agree. Like, men shouldn't force advances on women. Men shouldn't kill women. Mm-hmm. People shouldn't kill people in general. <laughs> but the thing is, is... Uh, Clicks. It's it's just you're, you're forming a narrative based off this poor girl who is dead just for retweets. Story, you're, you're, yeah. you're, that's obviously trying to get retweets. And it's sad. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, this, this social justice warrior world we're living in is so sad to me. It, and everybody feels like they have to go along with it or else they're canceled. <laughs> and it's 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 a fucking nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter is a fucking nightmare right now. That's why like nature versus nurture, you know, like what you grow up around is what really shapes your your beliefs. Like I to me it's fucking absurd that people are even like racist towards African Americans or like Hispanics or anything. Like these are just fucking people, you know, like just yeah, because Yeah, exactly. It, exactly. And people are fucking savage, but I've noticed it's mostly white kids. Mm. It's mostly uh like I, I saw this fucking shit this this I don't know if you you've seen that tweet or that thing that went viral about this this uh, La- Latina girl, she's working uh, as a police officer or a yeah, security guard for uh, at Border Patrol. And I saw another one tweet, uh, like she posted a video on Twitter or whatever saying she's just like, she, because everybody's hating on her and like telling her yeah. to die and attacking her. And like, I, I, I saw a tweet, like uh, it was a quote of her video and this, this little white girl is saying, you are so fucking stupid. You should kill yourself. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're working for ICE. You're doing all this bad shit. And it's like, how do you know she's not trying to work her way up to actually make a change? Mm -hmm. Like, you have to start, Mm -hmm. like, at the bottom as a police officer to work your way up. You can't just go in as a lieutenant and make a change. (laughs) That's not how the world works. Like, these kids have never been outside before. And it, everybody just bases all their views off of social media, and it's fucking, it's 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 insane. It also, blows my mind. It's also wild that people are like thirsting over her too. And she's not even working for ICE. It was Border Patrol. <laughs> ICE so sucks. Fuck ICE. Fuck ICE. ICE is ICE is terrible. terrible. ICE is terrible. However, you have to start somewhere to work your way up. And who knows what she's doing? Who knows what her intentions are? Mm-hmm. But the the fact that people just assume and form these narratives off of anything they just take something and they go off of it and it's crazy so did you see the video that she posted i I watched a little bit of it she's just saying she hopes something positive comes from all this and you can tell that she's like fucking shaken up about this because everybody's hating on her either people are saying oh she's so sexy or people are fucking telling her to kill herself (laughs) like this poor girl like who knows where she grew up who knows who her family is who knows what her intentions are or what she's done leading up yeah to them. exactly you know, like nobody knows done anything. and nobody yeah. knows and everybody's fucking going crazy hmm. and it, it, it the blows thing is, my like, mind people just expect her to just stop working for him as if like she doesn't live like a regular american life too yeah like, like ma- maybe she's trying to build a career in something and this is a stepping stone for her and i respect that you know maybe she's she's actually doing something and these kids who are saying all this shit don't go outside where they only go to parties. But for the most part, they're inside online making Not a shitty yeah. acoustic cover of something. Because <laughs> <laughs> under that tweet, she's like, check out my check out this video that I did. <laughs> like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> New EP. I, I personally, I just hate when race gets brought into stupid shit. Like things that you know it's like uh for example i guess it's like let's just do the most basic i'm sorry bro but you're a cis white male you cannot have an opinion right now so shut the fuck up ah mike <laughs> yeah, um that's an expensive no, mic yeah <laughs> um no I, I i think when you know like uh like uh lil nas x wearing cowboy boots or a cowboy hat you know 
like it's it's interesting it's it's definitely like something different to see but if that's what he feels comfortable in it shouldn't be like look at that black guy wearing a hat you know a cowboy hat you know it's just like he's doing him you know like this is what what he is recognizing as and you know I, I didn't is there a thing about it being a black guy in a cowboy hat? I didn't see I didn't well, see no, anything about people that. People were arguing uh when it was just Lil Nas X like on Old Town Road before Billy Ray, they were they took him off the country billboard. Oh yeah, 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 true, yeah. That's true. true. That's, that's true. That is shitty. That's 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 a flaw in the, the music industry yeah. and that's just dirty. How people doity. Yeah, it is dirty. That it, that does suck. <laughs> doity doity. Yeah. But once Billy Ray got on that bitch, <laughs> that was the camera. <laughs> the camera cut off. My was, camera ran out of battery. Once oh, Billy okay. Ray got on that bitch. Well, that was fun. Yo, I love you guys. Should we just should we just end it like with a black screen and stuff? So, Isaac, thanks for having us. D- thanks for having me. This has been glorious. I hope. I'm we glad you have me. I'm glad you have me. I want to have you. So I want to have, I want you to have my children. <laughs> I'm naming my firstborn Dylan. <laughs> All right. Um, no, let's that's cut not true. that part of the that. podcast. I'm going to sample it in my next single. Do you got anything coming up soon that we should pay attention to? Uh, yeah. <coughs> uh, thanks, guys. You have yeah, no problem. Right, thanks, cool. Korea. It's been fun.